Hello and welcome to the Word Podcast with me, your host, Cynthia Samuel Awoma. We are continuing our series, A New Believer in Christ. And our previous episode, we talked about the partner you need to know and meet. And we introduced and talked about the person of the Holy Spirit. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the habit of asking the helper for help. Now we've established the fact that the Holy Spirit is our helper and we're going to talk today focus primarily on the habit of asking the helper for help. Now it's one thing to know that you have a helper in the person of the Holy Spirit. It's another thing entirely to have the habit of asking him for help. A lot of us do life by ourselves, we just wing it, we just do things, and we do not even check with our helper. We do not even go to ask for help from the person that God gave to us to do life with us. That is the Holy Spirit. A helper is someone whose work is to help you do everything you have to do so that you're not doing them by yourself. That's the work of a helper to help you carry out your tasks, no matter how big or small they are. Now, we don't ask for help, not because we don't see the need for help, not because we don't know we need help. We don't ask for help because we focus, one, on our problem, two, on our capabilities, on our abilities, the things that we can do, the abilities that we have, our educational prowess, You know, we focus on our capabilities and we focus on our environment because we see others, you know, struggling to get things done, working hard to make it in life or to get things done. Then we just focus our mind and think that that is how it must be, that that's how it should be done and must be done. And if we're not doing it that way, then we're not doing it well. If we're not doing it that way, we're not doing it the way the world is doing it or the way people around us are doing it, then something is wrong with us. We're in actual fact. That's not how God wants us to live our lives. And don't get me wrong. This is not to say that we don't have to work hard or we don't have to give our time to saints. That's not what I'm saying at all. But we must come to the point where we rely completely on the Holy Spirit to help us with our life. God sent him to us for this very reason, to do life with us. And we can ask him for help consigning every aspect of our lives and we'll be sure that he will direct and lead us. A lot of times the reason why we find it hard to ask for help or when we ask for help, we don't receive what we've asked for is because we are not asking right. So we're going to be talking about some few points today. And the first point is ask in faith. When you're asking the helper for help, you must ask in faith. That is, you believe that what you've asked for, what you're asking for has been given you already. So you be on the lookout for it because the Bible says it is impossible to please God without our faith. When we are asking for help, when we're asking the Holy Spirit for help, we're praying to God and asking him to lead us through his Holy Spirit to direct us. We must believe, we must ask in faith, we must believe that what we've asked for, we've received, and we must be on the lookout for it, for the manifestation of it. Because Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, it is impossible to please God without our faith. It says, anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. And what is faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. That's NLT, the New Living Translation. The Amplified of that same verse, I like to read it. It says, now faith is the assurance title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So you haven't received it yet in your hands. You don't have the physical manifestation of that thing, but by faith you have it. 
what you hope for, you have it. So ask the way John chapter 16 verse 24 says, Jesus was talking here to the disciples. He says, you haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. So ask for help. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. God wants us to ask him for help. But when you ask for help, ask in faith. And secondly, your asking for help must be love-driven, not self-driven or pride-driven. When a person is driven by pride or self, that person oftentimes is not led by love. Mm -mm. They are only seeking their best interest, what is good for them. So we must always weigh our motives when we are asking for help, when we're asking the Holy Spirit to help us, to lead us, to direct us, to show us something, to give us something. We must always weigh our motives. Why are you asking for this thing? Why do you need this thing? Why do you want to have this? Why do you need this direction? Why do you need this idea? What is the motive behind your asking? We need to come to the point where we know that we serve a God who is spirit right? He's eternal. He knows things. So he even knows you better than you know yourself. So he knows your intent. He knows the thoughts that you think. He knows you better than you know yourself. So God cannot be mocked. We can't come to him and pretend and lie, you know, like Ananias and Sapphira did. They lied. People were giving money in church, selling their properties to give in church to provide for the needy people amongst them. And Ananias and Sapphira said, oh, they're going to do the same. They sold their land, but they came to the leaders and they brought part of the money. And the leader simply asked them, is this all of it? And they lied. The husband first, he lied. He said, yes, this is all of it. And that person said to him, you have not lied to me. You have lied to the spirit of God. And instantly he fell and died. So what is your motive for giving? It was a good thing they were doing, right? They sold their land to give to the needy among them, to give to the poor people among them. But what was their motive? What they did was a good thing, but what was their motive? Why did they do it? And it's so funny because the wife came and the disciple said to her, is this all the money you got from the land you sold? And she's like, yeah, there, it's all the money we got. And he said the same thing to her. These are the feet of the men who just took your husband away to go and bury him because he lied. And they will do the same to you too. And instantly she fell and died as well. God cannot be mocked. We serve a God who is holy, who is righteous. So what was their motive for giving? A lot of people were selling their properties, were giving for the needy, for the people among them who needed those things that they were giving. And Ananias and Sapphira, they were not doing it because of love. They were not love-driven. They were pride-driven. They were self-driven. They wanted to be among the people that said, when they are saying, oh, you know, I sold my land too as well, you know, to give to the needy among us. It would not be a thing of pride and self-righteousness for them. And I think if they had even said to the disciple, oh, this is not all of it. We sold our land, but we're giving part of it. If they had even said that, it would have even been good because their intentions would be known. But they lied about that. They lied and said that it was all they got from the land that they sold that they, they're bringing to the apostle. And it's so amazing because the thing they were doing was good. They were selling their land to provide for the needy among them. But their motive, their intentions was wrong and because of that they were killed and it's so amazing because that disciple or apostle i'm not exactly sure which one of them right now said to them you know it's not me you're lying to you're lying to the spirit of god you're lying to god it's not me you know So we must always weigh our motives. Why are you asking for help? The thing you need, why do you need it? If our motives are wrong, if our intentions are wrong, then you are not going to get what you're asking for. And that is not to say you cannot ask for things for yourself, you know, for things that you need. For example, maybe you need help passing an exam and you're asking the Holy Spirit to help you, you know, to prepare and read and pass the exam. You can ask for things. You can ask for what you need. 
But what is the motive? Like Ananias and Sapphira, what was their motive? Is it a thing of pride? You want to brag to your friends? You want to show that you are more brilliant? Our motives must always align with the word of God. Because sometimes we want things for our selfish desires to make our flesh feel good, to make us feel good, to brag to someone that we have something or that we can do X, Y, Z. So what is your motive? Why are you asking the Holy Spirit for help? You can ask for help. He's there to help you. He lives in you and he's ever ready to help you. But what is your motive? The thing you're asking for help with, is it love driven or is it pride driven? Is it self driven? James chapter 4 verse 2 to 3, I'll just summarize it. It says we don't have what we ask for because our motives are all wrong. Because we want only what gives us pleasure, emphasis on pleasure. We want to derive pleasure out of it for our own selfish desires. So you can ask for help, but let your asking be love driven. And thirdly, when you've asked for help, be a lot in the spirit. When you've asked the Holy Spirit for help, be a lot, be sensitive, be waiting for it, be waiting for the manifestation of it. Be on the lookout for how he would lead you. In other words, be sensitive in the spirit. Sometimes he might give you an impression in your heart. You could be praying, doing something else, maybe doing something random, cooking or doing whatever, and an idea will just drop in your spirit. Don't disregard it. Don't say, oh, this one, what kind of idea is it? No, get your journal and write it down. We've talked about the habit of journaling. Get yourself that journal and write that impression, that thought down. Because this is where some of us miss it. We ask for help and we are just busy bombarding our minds with different things, different thoughts, listening to different things. We're going to cover the habit of keeping the right environment in coming episodes. But Be on the lookout for what you have prayed and asked the Holy Spirit for help with. Be on the lookout for it. Be sensitive. Be alert. Be attentive. Don't have a disturbed, noisy spirit. Have a calm spirit where the Holy Spirit can impress things to you and you quickly catch it. Even though you are not so 100% sure of that idea, if it makes sense, which is your flesh that is leading you in that direction, the first thing you will do is you will get yourself that journal and you will write that idea, that thought down. Thing is, if that idea is from God, is from the Holy Spirit, When you write it down, he will start to expand on it for you. So be on the lookout. Sometimes it could be during your Bible study. As you are studying your Bible, a thought, an idea will just drop in your spirit. Something to do concerning what you've prayed for will drop in your spirit. Don't disregard it. Don't look at it too small. Don't look at it too big. Don't look at it too weird. Just write it down. You could just be watching something and that thing you are watching, an idea will come to you out of that thing. Don't say is because you were watching something. No, just go and write it down. When you write it down, if it's the Holy Spirit impressing that idea in your heart, he would expand on it for you. It is very important that when you have prayed, be on the lookout for what you have asked the Holy Spirit for help for. Sometimes it may even be that he doesn't want you to have that thing you've prayed for now. Maybe it's not the right time for it. Maybe it's not the right season for it. But one thing I'm sure of is this. When you ask the Holy Spirit for help, he always comes to help. He never leaves you stranded or alone. In fact, Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. In other words, I will not leave you without help. So sometimes you could ask for something and you're not getting it. It's not because he doesn't want to give to you. Sometimes it could be it's not the right season. You know, recently, myself and my husband, we were praying about something. We are agreeing together about something. It's something we want to do as a family, something we want to do. And it just looked so far-fetched, like we can't get that thing. And it started to bring friction between myself and my husband. When we talk about it, we just have this friction. And then we went to church one Sunday and our pastor was teaching and he was teaching exactly consigning that thing that my husband and I were praying about. And my husband was looking at me and I was looking at him and I'm like, can God be so real? 
you know, because we just had a very serious heated conversation about that thing the night before the Saturday before that Sunday, we went to church and then we got to church on Sunday and we discovered that pastor was teaching on that thing. And our pastor made this statement. He said, sometimes God may not want you to do something at a particular time, but in everything you are doing, pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. And he said that. And when we got home, my husband and I talked about it. We prayed about it and we just let it be. And then on this day, I'm going on my walk. I usually go on walks in the evenings. And I'm coming back home, the front of our gates, the entrance to our gates. I just got this impression in my spirit. It was so strong concerning that thing that this is why you don't have XYZ now. This is not the season for it. And like a whole clarity just came to me concerning that matter. And I just thanked God, like I just thanked God and I wrote it down. I quickly wrote it down on my journal, the one on my phone, and I just prayed about it. And since then, I've had peace about the issue. So sometimes you would ask for help, direction about something, and it could be that it's not the season for it, but you be on the lookout for how God wants to speak to you concerning that thing that you have asked for help with. Be on the lookout. He used my pastor, talked to us, and then he spoke to me about it in my spirit. So God is always there. The Holy Spirit is always there to help you. He's always there. You must come to the realization of the fact that you serve a God who loves you and wants to help you. In fact, say that to yourself constantly, that I serve a God who loves me and always wants to help me, who has my best interest at heart. God never abandons any of his children. He wants what is good for us, what is good for us. We may think we know what we want for ourselves, but only God truly knows what we need per time and when we need it. You know, I always pray this prayer, Lord, don't give me anything or take me anywhere. I'm not spiritually and character wise matured enough to handle I always pray that prayer, Lord, don't give me anything. I'm not spiritually matured enough to handle. Don't take me anywhere. I'm not spiritually matured enough to go. Oh, I don't have the character and capacity to sustain and stay in that place. Lord, don't take me if I'm not ready. Don't take me there. And it's one thing for us to want something. It's another thing for us to be ready to have that thing. Only God knows when we are truly ready. Only he knows. And so asking for help from the Holy Spirit should be a daily part of our lives and we must be sensitive to his leading. And so what do you ask the Holy Spirit for help for? What are the things that you can ask the Holy Spirit for help with? Your daily task, the big things, you can ask for help with them. You can ask for an idea, a decision, your family and friends, your relationship, the list goes on and on. Whatever you need help with, whatever you need help with, ask him. He will help you. And the last point I want to talk about today is why you should ask the Holy Spirit for help. You see, the Holy Spirit knows your future and your past. He's skilled and knowledgeable more than the most brilliant person on the face of the earth. You can never be stuck or be at a fix when you're following the direction and leading of the Holy Spirit. When you start to ask the Holy Spirit for help and follow his direction, you become more aware of how much God loves you and how much he wants you to succeed. Like God wants you to succeed. You have to know this. You will start to to become more aware of your purpose and the reason why God sent you here on earth. So this is why it is very important for us to ask him for help every day, daily. Asking the Holy Spirit for help helps you build a close relationship with God. And it helps us to live like God wants us to live. When you start to ask the Holy Spirit for help, he starts to expose some characters and attitudes you have that is limiting you from reaching your full potential from reaching the potential in which God has placed in you. When you ask the Holy Spirit for help, he gives you the strength to do what he's telling you to do. And when you ask him for help, he starts to reveal more to you. 
he starts to tell you deeper things. We talked about this in our previous episode. So I want to encourage you to form the habit of asking the helper, the Holy Spirit for help. It will change your life for the better. When you come to understand that this is a person, this is the spirit of God living in me and he wants the best for me. When you start to ask him for help daily, your life will change for the better. You become more aware of the God that you serve. You fall more in love with God. All right. That's all we have for today's episode. Thank you for listening. I'll see you on my next one. Bye.